Hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here, Locked On Big 12 Podcast. Today, it is the 9th of May, 2022. And on today's show, we are focusing on Big 12 running backs, past and present. We'll discuss the class from last year and then look ahead to next year's group of Big 12 running backs. We'll be talking about them all week long coming up. And also, we'll talk about some diamond sports from the weekend, some big results and how things are shaking up moving forward in that department. And all that's coming up right after this. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, hello everybody, Josh Neighbors here, Locked On Big 12 Podcast. Um, still under, I'm under the weather, honestly. You know, I think it's the changing weather. Uh, right now, I was calling baseball this weekend. We had mid-40s out here in Virginia. It, it, it was, you know, uh, the weekend of May 8th, Mother's Day weekend, and I saw down in Miami the F1 race. It was in the 90s. We were in the 40s. It was 45 yesterday. During and cloudy and, and some rain during the game that I called. So I think I'm reeling from all the changing in weather, and it should get back up in the 70s this week. Uh, allergies not dealing with it well, so I apologize for the voice. But still, there's a lot to get to from this weekend. Diamond Sports, as I mentioned, are in full swing. Uh, I promised running back week, and we've just been so backed up with news and the draft and whatnot, and NIL and all those things. And look, there's still more of that to cover. But, you know, it's time to talk about some Big 12 running backs. I mean, we talked about quarterbacks. Time to talk about those RBs, the guys who made the conference go. Before we do, make sure you follow us on Twitter, at LOBig12. You guys can follow me, at JoshNeighbors underscore. You see it right there. Um, Find the show wherever you guys get your podcast. And if you have not yet, find us on YouTube. It's a growing community over there. Appreciate all of your all's interactions. Uh, and I'll resp- uh, reply to some of them uh, as well. And also, a lot of them do give me ideas for stuff that we're going to talk about on the future. A lot of good comments from you all when it came to stuff about Big 12 expansion, OU and Texas, and, and you know, when they're going to leave and whatnot. A lot of differing opinions. I know there are a lot of you out there who, who said, hey, kick them to the curb. We want to see them go. Uh, you know, give us the money and, and see you later. And there's some that, that want to keep them. And also some thoughts about divisions and non-divisions. So keep that stuff going. All right, let's get to it now. Let's talk some running backs. So last year, there was a lot of conversation around the Big 12 about the success of the running backs. And I had mentioned it uh, previously on a podcast, but I'll mention it one more time in uh, in the football category. But if you look at last year and you look at the amount of production that this conference had from the running backs. It was absolutely ridiculous. If you go to the the rushing from last year, and, and also the guys they lost, but just generally speaking, you know, you had uh, last year seven 1,000-plus yard rushers, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Abram Smith, Deuce Vaughn, Kennedy Brooks, Letty Brown, and Jalen Warren. And that doesn't even count. You know, there were a lot of other guys. Treston Ebner ran for basically 800 yards last year. Devin Neal had a really nice season. Sir Roderick Thompson scored 10 plus times on the ground. It was a pretty crowded backfield. And also, we know that they had uh, you know Zach Evans, who is a really talented back, uh, now gone from the conference, but he was a guy as well. So th- there were a lot of really good backs in the conference. Um, but I, I think it also, you know, with the quality of backs and maybe also the lack of good quarterback play, there were some questions about, hey, was it how good the backs are? Was it how bad the QBs are? Or was it a little bit of both, right? W- w- did both of those things come together, <coughs> excuse me, to combine for what we saw last year? And I think it's a really valid question. Also, there will be some breaks to, to drink the water today. Um, I think it's a really valid question. I feel like this year, the quarterback play in the conference is, as a whole, going to take a step forward. Um, now, they did lose a couple guys, right? You you know lose Brock Purdy, um, Jared Dagey no longer at West Virginia. 
Skylar Thompson's gone. Um, you know, Gary Bohannon's gone. Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler both gone. But I, 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 I tend to think that the quarterback play overall is going to get a bit better in the conference as we move forward, um, you know, heading into next year. And I, I guess, you know, maybe I would say the running back play is going to take a step back, but look at the guys they lost. Brees Hall, 1,400 yards last year, 1,472 yards, 20 touchdowns. Abram Smith, 1,600 yards last year, 12 touchdowns. Kennedy Brooks last year, 1,253 yards, 13 touchdowns. Letty Brown, 1,065 yards, 13 touchdowns. Jalen Warren, 1,216 yards, 11 touchdowns. Um, Treston Ebner, 799 yards and a pair of scores, but also, you know, great special teams player um, as well. So, you know, a lot of these guys who were these dominant backs, I mean, you count it right there. Iowa State, Baylor, Oklahoma, Letty Brown. Oh, it's Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma, Letty Brown's not a person, uh, a team. West Virginia, Oklahoma State. There are one, two, three, four, five teams right there who lost their number one rusher. Count TCU in there. That's six teams that lost their number one back. Um, and so that means that there's going to be a lot of change in the conference moving forward. And I, I you know, I'm going to power rank these later in the week, but uh, you know, I, I think there are a couple teams that really stick out, and we'll discuss some of those today. Um, but you know, there's a lot of questions to be answered for some of these teams. I mean, I think Baylor. You know, we think about Blake Shapen taking over the offense. Okay, who are going to be the guys behind him? that are carrying the rock, right? The Hunter Deckers era, um, you know, is beginning at Iowa State. And is Gyro Brock the guy uh, who's going to take up, you know, that mantle, uh, you know, behind him and become the, the new RB1, right? Oklahoma State's got some guys, but they lose what was a really pleasant surprise in Jalen Warren, who had a fantastic year last year. Some of these teams have to answer questions about that running back position, uh, so which makes you wonder, you know, is there going to be more stress on the quarterback position this year? I tend to think yes. So let's talk about some of those teams, um, you know, in that running back spot, just kind of the conference from a whole. Uh, but first, quick word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to Built.com today. That's Built.com. When you guys do, you guys will find a select or a you know, wide variety of Built Bars that they have got right now available for you. Plenty of flavors. You just go there today. Use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, for 15% off at Built.com today. Once again, promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, for 15% off at Built.com. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of of net carbs, better for you than a candy bar, tastes just as good as well. Once again, built.com, promo code LOCK15 for 15% off today. So I, I spent a long time doing, uh, you know, I've got, I got, let's see, let's see, I've got about uh, this much, this, this, you can see it right here, just doing research on Big 12 running backs and kind of where things stand right now. I think any conversation about the running back position in this conference starts with the Texas Longhorns. You know, I'm sure, I'm going to be power ranking later on in the week, but I mean, I think all of us are sensible people and can agree that Texas right now has the best backfield in the league. Coming into the season, I don't think there's any doubt that Texas has the best two guys back there, to be honest. I know people think they got some, you know, they've got some good depth and they do, but I really think we're primarily going to see B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson. B. John Robinson is maybe the most talented back, I would say, to come through this conference, potentially since Adrian Peterson. I mean, he's that special. You guys are, you guys have heard me talk about it before. You know, um, I kind of run out of adjectives when talking about B. John Robinson and, how good he, you know, he looked at times last year, 195 carries, 1127 yards, 11 touchdowns. He had six 100 plus yard games, 20, uh, 26 receptions for 295 and four scores. You know, the thing about Bijan is that 
we we talked about Brees Hall maybe being a first round talent just because of how good of a running back he developed into. Um, when you talk about a player just from a talent perspective, not like okay, what kind of player are they now? If we talk about a talent perspective, Bijan Robinson was the most talented pound for pound running back last year in the league. He just moves a bit differently than everybody else does. Maybe not as accomplished, maybe not as you know grounded as good, and, and didn't have it all together. Um, the one thing for him last year was a lot better in the in the first half than he was in the second half, and, and I mean in games, uh, 11 carries for, that's not 11 carries. I think it's 111 carries for 685 and seven scores in the first half of games last year, 83 rush for, uh, 442 and four scores in the second half of games. Still really good, but things just, they did slow down. They, they, they slowed down a lot. And so I think the important thing for Texas this year is balancing out that running back load between Bijan and between Roshan. I think that's going to be the key for them is managing uh, those two. So you can have a fresh Bijan or fresher, I should say, Bijan Robinson towards the back end of, um, you know, the back end of games. I think that was the one. And look, a lot of parts of that team fell short uh, last year in the end of games. You know, I think that was um, that was a big theme, but maybe they balanced the carries out and get a few more guys involved. I mean, you know, Keelan Robinson um, and, you know, Jaden Blue, get those guys involved a bit more just to, you know, just to steady things. And then late in games go, and also late in the season, Bijan was injured. He misses that. Uh, I think he missed the Kansas State game in the end of the year. Because um, Roshan has that game, you know, it's like a 137-yard game towards the back end of the season. Just managing the reps, managing the workload. So, you know, if there is a time where you need to have an all Bijan Robinson game, you can do it, but you don't need to have, you know, you don't need to just work them all the time. And that's the nice thing about the Texas offense. It should be much more balanced. And with that balance, that means that, hey, if there is a game, if there's a dogfight, if there's a certain team that we just need to pound the rock, you know, a million times with Bijan Robinson a la the TCU game last year, just do it. Just find, you know, and that, and that allows you to do it. I, I think the one problem we saw this last year, especially with Oklahoma State, was Jalen Warren got, uh, you know, really uh, worn down, I thought, because a lot of high volume, high carry opportunities, just a lot of hits on the body. And so for him, you know, I think it was, we saw it take its toll, especially later on, in the season. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a key, big key for Texas is managing that. But Roshan Johnson, definitely a very capable back, um, you know, in the backfield. Uh, or just, you know, in, in both ways too. But just a nice guy to have, you know, he, I think a lot of teams love to have him starting. He's your number two. That's a great place to be. Then Kansas State, you know, um, they're not necessarily number two in the rankings. I'm not even sure if I'm there. Actually, might be a surprise at number two for you all. But Kansas State's got Deuce Vaughn, who, uh, you know, kind of in the same sense about Bijan Robinson. Like, this is uh, – Bijan Robinson, excuse me, Brees Hall. This is the most established guy we have out there. This this is the Swiss Army knife. This is the player, right? Think about it, you know, just last year – on the season as a, as a total, 235 carries, 1,404 yards, um, and then at 6, 6, uh, 6 yards a carry, 18 touchdowns on the ground, 49 receptions for 468 and four scores, nine 100 plus yard games out of 13. Basically, he's 6.6 yards per, per touch. He's a four down back. Right. This is a guy that's a four down back. Um, And, you know, this is a guy on fourth downs last year, too. Six rushes, 54 yards and two scores. This guy is a do it all guy. And especially think about last year with Kansas State. They had a revolving door of quarterbacks. We saw Will Howard. Obviously, we had Skylar Thompson. Um, We saw them even have to go to Jaron Lewis at times. And even with that revolving door, he had a great season. So this is, you know, B. John Robinson might be the talent 
to watch, but the player who's just kind of like the, I'm getting, I'm squeezing it all out. I'm getting everything out of who I am. I can be everything for this offense. He's the best player on that team. He is far and away the best player on that team. And, you know, I think a lot of us are really excited about his NFL future too, because there's nothing that guy can't do for you on basically every single down uh, of the game. Oklahoma, another team, we always think about them. Eric Gray, okay, how good can you be? You know, and and I think it's now his, uh, it's completely his role. So we'll see how that goes. Marcus Major and Javante Barnes are there too, but it's going to be Eric Gray's role. He's the number one guy. Go to Kansas. I mean, Kansas is a really interesting team. Uh, you think about last year, how good Devin Neal was, and they get a really good player in Kai Thomas, <clears throat> excuse me, from Kansas. So we're excited to see how that backfield you know looks. And once again, Devin Neal's really good player. It's just the team he was on last year wasn't very good. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Texas Tech, so Roderick Thompson and uh, you know Taj Brooks and Xavier White. I think is you know maybe playing some wide receiver coming up this year. Like just multiple options for them. You know, think about TCU. Okay, they have Kendra Miller and Amari Di Mercado still left. So guys who have gotten carries before. You get on the list. There's a lot of teams we're asking questions about, but there are some familiar names. So there's going to be some new names in some places getting opportunities, and then you're going to get um, you know guys that are you know. Maybe in Baylor's case, some fresh faces, guys we haven't seen before, getting opportunities too. There's a good mixture in this conference, uh, and I'm really excited to, to kind of get more into these guys as the week goes along and bounce some ideas off the other Big 12 folks and get some more information, honestly, you know, about some of these running backs at some of these positions that's coming up uh, later on in the week. So running back week has begun. Just a little taste for you all right there. Now I'll take a quick break and one more word from our sponsors, and we'll talk some Big 12 Diamond Sports. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Go to Bet Online and BetOnline.net today. They've got the NBA playoffs. They've got uh, basketball. Uh, you know, uh, NBA playoffs, obviously NHL playoffs as well. F1, NASCAR. Um, you know, UFC, uh, Bellator MMA, all that stuff. They have got so go to bet online and betonline.net today. Bet online, it's where the game starts. All right, let's start in softball. So over the weekend we had Bedlam softball, and uh, you know the softball. It's been it's been I would say inequity is the right word across the conference this year. Three teams above five hundred. You got Oklahoma at seventeen and one. Oklahoma State at 14 and 4 and Texas at 12 and 6. Then you got 6 and 12, 6 and 12, 5 and 13, 3 and 15. Uh, when you're going to have three teams pile up as many wins as the top three did OU, Texas, and Oklahoma State, it's going to, somebody's going to take the losses, right? So it's, it's, it's been drawn out. Um, Oklahoma's amazing run continues. They get to 48 and 1. They've won nine straight. They had a weekend sweep of Oklahoma State. And I know there's a lot of momentum, excuse me, coming into that weekend, a lot, a lot of pressure. In that spot, uh, you know, in Oklahoma State, like they had, they had a chance to put the pressure on, and Oklahoma turned them back. So Oklahoma wins another regular season championship under Patty Gasso, and uh, that is where we now sit. You know, so as we head into the conference tournament, on the baseball side of things, Oklahoma State still leads the league. They're thirteen and five. They've played. Uh, 18 games in conference. TCU has just hit their 21. So they're 13 and eight. So at this point, you know, Oklahoma State, I think there's, let's see how many, um, how many games they have left. They've got two series left. They've got Texas Tech and Baylor and TCU is now three behind them in the loss column. So, um, you know, you're thinking at this point that uh, it's going to be uh, Oklahoma State who has really held steady at number three in the country. And they had a weekend series uh, against SEMO. Uh, It looks like Oklahoma state's path to the big 12 championship is clear. It's kind of theirs for the taking now with six conference games left. And uh, TCU has three games at hand. The problem is all three of those games are losses. So not a chance for them to go get it. There is some disappointment. I think in my opinion, you know, with no Texas making a push, Uh, you know, Texas ends up 11 and 10 in the conference. They're in the bottom half right now. West Virginia, really, really strong year for them at 10 and 8 in the league. Oklahoma has come on really strong as of late. They took two of three 
this weekend from aforementioned TCU. Texas Tech is 11 and 7, and TCU is 13 and 8. So, honestly, in the loss column, you know, um, I mean, Texas Tech and Oklahoma have better chances of catching a Texas uh, Oklahoma State than TCU does. Those teams are just two games back. And uh, so that that Oklahoma State Texas Tech series, it's got a good chance uh, of deciding uh, the conference. I mean, look, as it's all in in Stillwater, and if Oklahoma State wins one of those games, they get a weekend series on the road in Baylor, sure. But if Oklahoma State wins one of those games at home, uh, Texas Tech gets within one. And, uh, you know, I, I think still Oklahoma State might be able to hold them off. But uh, it's a huge series coming up this weekend. That's the only team really that's got an opportunity left to catch them. So there's your update on the Big 12 Diamond Sports. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that with Stephen Simcox coming up here. But running back week has begun. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at LO Big 12. You guys can follow me at Josh Neighbors underscore. I hope the voice improves. Find the podcast wherever you guys get your podcasts. And you can find us on YouTube as well. Till next time, my friends, as always, stay safe.